Here's a wild tour story for me, DJ Shifty, mild mannered, good citizen, good Samaritan. I was booked to play this event in a place called Cave in Rock, Illinois, uh, which would give you an idea about like how close to civilization it was. Whereas like the nearest airport was four hours away. Um, so it's basically like really in the middle, it's like called Cave and Rock. So it's truly in the middle of nowhere. And I think I had to fly into St. Louis. So they, it was like a rave in the woods more or less. So what they did is they hired um, a limo driver, like a stretch limo driver to drive me four hours from St. Louis to Cave and Rock, Illinois. And the dude rolled up and it was like, I'm sure that this limo had its like heyday, but it, it was probably, look, it was like beat up, like probably, it must've been like from the eighties or something. And the dude who's, he was a nice guy. So I think he, I think he had a mullet. Like it was like, he had like a, you know, no sleeves and his, his like girl or wife or baby mama or whatever uh, was with him in the car too. And they, they drove me, uh, th this plan, they were gonna drive me to the festival, um, which, which mind you is four hours away in the middle of nowhere. So at a certain point, you know, we're driving, we're driving, we're driving. And the dude says, you know, like, I think, I think we're, we're lost. Like, I don't, I don't know where we are anymore. And this is a place where th there's no cell service. And at a certain point we're lost really in the middle of nowhere. And he runs out of gas. And so we're just stuck. There's like, there aren't even like houses nearby. No one's phone works. And this dude is now like, we're stopped. I'm in the car like, yeah, I think I'm gonna die tonight. Like this is this is probably how it, how it ends. And he's like outside, like screaming at his wife, kicking the car. And like, I, yeah, like I did not see how this situation, like maybe I was gonna have to walk. Maybe I was gonna get like Blair Witch Project. Maybe something like at one point, probably someone was gonna have to start eating someone else. Um, it, it, was, it, was getting, it was getting that dire. Um, and so basically it was like hopeless. Also, needless to say, like after this has happened, I'm like several, several hours late for my set. Um, and so at one, finally, thankfully, someone, like a car drove by and they like seemed like young and ravey. And so we flagged them down and it turned out they were going to the festival. Um, so I hitched, I got like, I got in the car, I left the limo driver, it's just these strangers on the road who claim they're going to a festival and they drove me to the festival. Um, and now at this point, I'm probably like three or four hours late. And at this point, like all the stages are shut down. Um, so like, like every, everything's dead. There's no party happening, uh, nothing. And some, some people are like, yo, dude, like, why are you so late? Like, what, 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 like, we were waiting for you. I'm like, I mean, there's nothing I could do. But what they ended up doing, this was like one of these camping festivals. They ended up building, rebuilding the stages for me, turning everything on. And it's one of those things where sometimes when you travel for so long and you feel you're gonna die and like someone might like start cannibalizing you, um, is that when you finally get to play, it's like the most therapeutic, like, freeing thing ever and so they built up the stage and I ended up playing for like four hours um, and it ended up being like a super dope super dope show um, but I did think I was gonna die before it happened you know one of the original names I think we had was like angels with dirty faces we had all these different names and and Hank was just like nah you're the young black teenagers and we were like what and your first record's gonna be proud to be black was our first song but Pig was one of the front runners in, in, the, in the rap game, you know, being like one of the top, top MCs of his time to come out. And I adored him because I adored his personality. I thought he was real cool, funny, humble. This was right when I joined Public Enemy. So I'm shook. They didn't find anything. Talking to Chuck, I was like, Chuck, man, did you hear there's a bomb threat in the hotel? He's like, oh, that's nothing, Lord. You remember Flavor in 87, there was a bomb on the stage. Flavor's like, yeah, boy, there's a bomb on it. That was crazy, G. I started with a MPC and a computer, so I would just like kind of like make beats on the MPC from the records and shit. And then I got into uh, Ableton, which is just super dope software. It's real powerful and shit. And uh, the machine, 